Hi everybody, I'm going to just do a video today of uh, spay surgery in this cat. Her name is Willow. She is a young six month old cat and her spay surgery should feel fairly routine. However, it is spring right now and even young cats will come into heat easily at a young age when they are this young. So the first thing I'm doing is starting to drape her to make a surgical field so that it's nice and sterile. When I enter her abdomen, I don't want any bacteria or germs of any kind getting inside of her. And so I make it as surgically sterile as possible. In order to keep these hack towels where they are, they've all been autoclaved. I just use some clamps in order to make sure that we maintain this surgical area that is nice and sterile. Prior to me doing this, her coat on her abdomen was clipped and then prepped for surgery to Autumn. make sure that there's no hair. Can you take a reading? Oh. And just check her vitals for me. There's many instruments that we use as part of the space surgery procedure, but of course we gain access into the abdomen using a scalpel blade. This cat, only six months old, but already has a fairly uh, thick fat layer. And so we'll just remove a little bit of that fat in order to have some good access to the abdominal wall. We use gauze a fair amount, both to control bleeding as well as to um, have better visibility and keep the surgical site dry. Don't know if you can see this, but there is a white line running here. That's called the linea alba. The linea alba is where the zebra muscles come together. Um, the, the six pack muscles, you might call them. And so that's where we make our incision to gain access into the abdomen. The first thing you see when you look in the abdomen in this cat is a fair amount of fat. Not a huge surprise because we already saw that she had a fairly large amount of in uh, subcutaneous fat. We use our um, spay hook to go ahead and pick up the uterus. The uterus in a cat is quite a bit different than a human though it is very similar to a dog. And then what we have is the horn of the uterus in my hand here and her ovary right here. And in this surgery, we're doing an ovariohysterectomy surgery. And so we're going to remove both the ovary and the uterus. So first thing we do is we wanna make sure that we ligate all of the blood vessels because as you can see, this is a fairly vascular area and we do not want to have any issues with bleeding. And so we go ahead and get a hemostat on the pedicle blood vessels. And then we take our um, suture and ligate the area. I'm going to use a Miller's knot in this case. And so We'll say just like in all medica or all surgeries, it's a lot easier to do surgery on a patient who isn't uh, fat, and that's because fat is uh, really affects visibility and gets in the way of a lot of organs and structures. So what we're doing here is we are just going to tighten up this ligature, make sure that there won't be any bleeding after the tissue is removed. We always do six throws on our knots to make sure that they're nice and tight and there won't be any slippage. And then we go ahead and remove the ovary from the pedicle. We replace the pedicle back in the body and then we go and check for bleeding with our hemostat. The way we do that is just down in with our gauze 
and there's no bleeding, so we're happy. Next, we break down the broad ligament here, which is very tiny in an immature cat like her. She is not in heat. This uterus is very tiny. And the next thing we do is we gain access to the right uterine horn, which we do just by adding a little bit of tension and pulling up the, whoop, pulling up the horn until we get to the ovary on the right side of the body. So if you think about a uterus in a cat, it's the shape of a Y and the ovaries sit close to the kidneys. So same thing on this side, we'll go ahead and make our ligature and then we can remove the ovary here as well. So this is a special type of suture material that dissolves inside the body. And so that's why we can feel comfortable leaving it in the body. Uh, it's also sterile when it comes to us. And so we don't have to worry about it causing any bacterial infections or issues in our patients. This particular suture is called monocryl, and it is used a lot in dog and cat surgery. Again, we put the pedicle back into the cat and then go ahead and check for any bleeding. And there isn't any, oh, there's that fat again. And so now we break down the broad ligament on the right side and then we can go ahead and do the ligature on the, um, just above the cervix so that the entire uterus and ovaries of this cat are gone. And so she will never come into heat and she will not be able to reproduce, which really is the goal with a pet cat because they do not need to reproduce and they make much nicer pets when they've been spayed or neutered. and back into the body with the uterine stump. And then we'll check to see if we have any bleeding at this point in all three areas. Nope. And then we'll just check on the right side. Nope. Okay. So then let's carry on. What we do next is we suture our patient back together and so she'll be ready for her after surgery wear. After surgery wear is a really nice alternative for our patients who are spayed and then for dogs who are neutered so that they don't have to wear an uncomfortable e-collar. So when we suture up the body wall, we wanna make sure that we get the fascia, which is the connective tissue on top of the muscle. The muscle itself doesn't hold suture very well, and so we want to make sure that we do a good job here, making sure that her body wall stays intact, because of course this is what holds her body and all its bits and pieces in the abdomen where they're supposed to be.
This suture pattern is called simple continuous and for obvious reasons, you tie a knot at one end and then it's just a simple sort of continuous pattern until you get to the other end where you will do, or where I will do another ligature and then cut the suture material. You may notice that I did a double tie on the needle driver that time and that was just to make sure that we don't get any slippage with our uh, suture material. This particular suture material is called a monofilament which means it's not braided which means that um, there's less chance of bacterial infection, it slides more easily through the tissues and it's really uh, good for a type of suture that's going to be dissolving in the body. So the next thing that we're going to do is have RVT Autumn come and put our local block and so that is some bupivacaine inside the incision of this pet so that when she wakes up she will not feel the discomfort of having this incision. It lasts about two to three hours until it starts to subside but we also use other pain relief me mechanisms as well including um, injectable pain relief in the hospital and pain medication to go home with the pet as well. So now I'm going to do the sub Q layer. This is the subcutaneous or fatty tissue and so we'll go ahead and close this girl up and then she'll be ready to wake up. This particular patient uh, appears to have hip dysplasia so the owners have asked us to do x-rays of her hips so after surgery while well, she is still anesthetized we'll take her into the diagnostic imaging lab and take a picture of her hips for her, her pet parents. You'll notice this cat is on an intravenous drip, so we can have full access to her um, circulatory system at any time. She's also hooked up on an ECG, uh, which checks her heart beat as well as the conductivity, the electrical conduction in her heart. She's also on a capnograph, which makes us uh, sure that she is breathing properly because it's a CO2 monitor. Um, she has a temperature uh, thermometer down her throat right now into her esophagus so that we know she's a good temperature. And uh, we have an RVT monitoring her the entire time she is under anesthetic. She has an endotracheal tube in her throat so that we have 100% control over her airway. And so if we need to use any medications or ventilate her, we can do that quite um, readily. And cat skin tends to close up quite nicely. And this is the one area where it's actually nice to have some um, subcutaneous fat because really skinny animals don't close up as nicely as animals with a little bit of a fat layer. And you'll notice we left this tag out and that's so that we could close this cat up quite nicely and have a buried knot at the end so there won't be any suture sticking out once we are finished. And we cut off a little tag there and we'll bury the knot. So maybe I should point out the type of needle I'm using. This is a 
reverse cutting needle. It's so that it's easy to cut through the um, skin and makes a, a beautiful closure for our patient. Okay, all done. Looks beautiful. Um, this cat is ready to go for her hip x-ray. Thanks for watching. I hope this patient does well. I have every confidence that she will. Thank you. Goodbye.